Ahoy there! Welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brains player too. But today that be Captain Julian to ya. And ye landlubbers best listen well or ye next port of call will be Davy Jones's locker. Sorry, I'm getting a little carried away, but can you blame me? Sea of Thieves is finally out! At last, a swashbuckling pirate game to scratch an itch that has gone unscratched since Assassin's Creed 4. And if you know anything about scabies, you know that pirates were a very itchy sort. And while sailing the high and holy crap that water is gorgeous seas with a crew of your best mates, plundering and getting into hilarious trouble is a lot of fun from the comfort of your couch, there are a lot of reasons you wouldn't ever want to actually be a pirate. First, we should probably narrow down which pirates we're talking about. Piracy has a longer history than you might realize. The first recorded incidents goes back as far as the 14th century BCE. Even a young Julius Caesar was captured by pirates in 75 BCE. And to this day, pirates roam off the coast of Somalia, pouncing on fishing boats and Tom Hanks's that stray too close to the Horn of Africa. Basically, as long as people have shipped goods in boats, other people have thought, we should steal the goods in those boats. But when I say pirate, you say "ar" and immediately picture peg legs and parrots, you know, Sea of Thieves types. That image of pirates comes from what's known as the Golden Age of Piracy, which lasted from 1650 to 1720. Some of the popular notions about pirates from this era are accurate. Pirate activity was global, but in the fertile and nearly lawless Caribbean Sea, it was the most rampant. The abundant sugarcane made rum cheap, and cheap booze kept sailors happy. And pirates were known to spend their booty on, well, booty, when they stopped in a pirate haven like Port Royal. Some aspects of pirate life might even be more appealing than you realized. Many pirates did indeed live by a code. The code varied from ship to ship, but usually included provisions like equal and fair division of plunder among the crew. Pirate captains were often democratically elected, and a pirate ship was one of the few places black men in the era might be treated equally to their white counterparts. There are even a few famous accounts of female pirates like Mary Reed and Anne Bonny. So, yo-ho a pirate's life for you, right? I wouldn't be so fast to walk that plank. There's a much less glamorous side to the pirate life that movies, Disneyland rides, and games like Sea of Thieves don't portray. Mostly, it has to do with disease. A pirate ship is about the least sanitary place possible, with burly men packed into close quarters and nary a bar of soap in sight. Staying out at sea for long periods in the Caribbean heat meant sailors wore the same clothes until they rotted away. Sailors chewed charcoal to help choke down their diet of salted meat and rotten vegetables, and bowel problems were frequent and easily spread throughout the crew. It gives new meaning to the term poop deck. Rats loved to nest in the nooks and crannies of the ship, and clearing them out meant risking bites and contracting skin-burrowing mites that caused scabies. A lack of vitamin C led to scurvy where gums would bleed and teeth would fall out. And these are problems just associated with being on a boat in the 1600s. We haven't even gotten to the swashbuckling battles yet. Pirates ideally liked capturing ships through intimidation, but you don't earn a fearsome reputation without putting up a fight. And towards the end of the golden age of piracy, governments that once supported the pirates so long as they attacked rival nations' vessels now deemed them a scourge and began hunting them down. So though they preferred to avoid it, pirates still had to fight, and it wasn't pretty. Cannonballs tearing through wood created a ton of shrapnel that would disfigure the crew. The rudimentary firearms they fought with still packed enough punch to shatter bones, and usually a gunshot wound or shrapnel injury meant amputation. Even small wounds that we could easily treat today would become infected and lead to death if they weren't hacked off in time. Many pirate ships had surgeons aboard to perform operations, but if they didn't, the job usually fell to a cook or a carpenter. And forget about anesthesia, the best a pirate could hope for when going under the saw was a swig of a stiff drink. On the plus side though, if you did lose a limb, most pirate codes entitled you to a little extra pay. So, silver lining? Limbs weren't just lost in combat, but oftentimes were crushed by shifting cargo and cannon when the seas got rough. Add up all these diseases and hazards, and pirate life expectancy was just a few years. There's a reason real pirates didn't bury their treasure. They wouldn't live long enough to dig it up again. Not that they usually plundered Spanish gold and silver. Oftentimes, the ships they raided carried mundane supplies like eggs and cotton that they could use themselves or turn around and sell for cheap. They went through all that, and most of them didn't even get rich. So while you're out there gallivanting with your friends, just remember that your avatar getting shot out of a cannon has it much better than real life pirates ever did. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe for more. So pirates might not be what you expected, and guess what? Neither were the pyramids. 
check out this video from Assassin's Creed Origins to find out more. And don't forget to keep on playing.